Hi, I'm Dr. Rich. Thanks for joining me to read another x-ray. This is an interesting x-ray that we have uh, to look at today. This panoramic x-ray was brought to me by a patient. He was actually the father of a patient of mine. He's from Italy, so this was taken in Italy, and he told me all the dental implants that you can see on it were placed in Italy. And he was only in town visiting for a few weeks, wanted to get a checkup cleaning since it had been a couple years since he had had his teeth cleaned. And so his daughter brought him in, and we cleaned his teeth, and I was looking at his x-ray, checked it, told him what I saw, and then he went back to Italy to get any work that he needed done, done, other than the cleaning that we did. So let's start. This panorax had chopped off part of the jaw on it, so you can't actually see the condyles on, the, on either side of the lower jaw. The condyle is actually the ball at the end. That's what the jaw pivots on, so when you open and close, the condyle is the round end that, you know, it rotates and slides as you open and close your mouth. So I can't see anything on, of that on this panoramic x-ray, but I can see plenty of other stuff. So again, let's start down on his lower right-hand side in the lower jaw. And I can see it appears that he's missing a his wisdom tooth. I can see his second molar there, and it has a crown on it. And then in front of that, it appears that he's missing his first molar. To replace it, I guess maybe he had quite a big space because it appears that there's three dental implants that were placed in the area of where the molar is. No, it looks like he's missing uh, his first molar and his second premolar because I can see his first premolar here, and I think this is his canine although his front teeth are pretty beat up, so it's a little hard to tell, but I believe that's the canine right there. So this was a decent spot. He was missing two teeth, basically, but the first molar is a two-rooted tooth, but for some reason they placed three dental implants, and when they went to make the bridge, they only used two of the three. And so you can see the three, you know, the bridge is attached to the front implant and to the back implant, and in between there is a implant all by itself. It's one's actually quite a bit lower than the other two implants. I wonder if this was placed as an immediate, uh, I wonder if all these implants were placed as immediate implants. He had those, the first molar removed and he had the second premolar removed and they just, you know, drilled out the roots a little bit and placed the implants into the root sockets, the sockets of the tooth. This one implant that's not attached to anything it's a little concerning because I can't really see. It looks like it's uncovered. There doesn't appear to be a healing cap. No, definitely no healing cap, but I can't even see a cover screw in there. It looks like that whole screw chamber, post chamber is just open. And it's also very low. So this dark line right in here, this is the inferior alveolar nerve space. Granted, this is only a 2D image, but the tip of that implant is, if it was dead set over top of that nerve, it would be into the nerve. So the person wasn't having any, you know, wasn't complaining about any numbness on their low bottom lip. So because of that, I'm going to assume this implant was not actually into the nerve space, but to one side of it. So this implant is either more cheek side versus, uh, relative to the nerve or more tongue side relative to the nerve. If he were to get a comb beam, a CBCT scan of this area, 3D image will give you, will let you know exactly where that implant is. I'm going to assume they never used this implant because if just it was so much lower versus the other ones. So I find that very interesting. I wonder if he got a discount on that one. You know, buy two implants, get one for free, even though we can't really use it. All right, so now let's go over to his front teeth. So he has his first premolar here, his canine. Then he's got one, two, three, four lateral incisors. Again, I can see on the biting surface here, they look fairly warm, worn. Uh, this patient, this person is 83 years old at the time. Uh, I saw him, so this Panorex might have been taken a year or two prior to that. A lot of wear and tear over the years. Then over on to the lower right side, we have uh, lower left side, excuse me. I could see his canine. I could see his two premolars. And then there's, I can see the crown of another tooth. So since he's got his two premolars, nothing's missing there. This is most likely a supernumerary tooth, just an extra tooth, most likely started developing when he was a kid. And where it is, it's pretty deep. His dentist at the time just left it. I mean, usually, 
Again, this tooth most likely is not right underneath the existing teeth. It's usually to one side, the tongue side or the cheek side. And just because of where it is, it's hard to remove it. it to remove it would actually cause quite a bit of damage. So they decided just to leave it because it's also very close to the nerve canal. Let me outline the nerve canal on the bottom left-hand side. You can see it down here. And so best just to leave that. So then he also has his first molar and second molar. The first molar has a crown on it. it appears to be a porcelain fused to metal because I can see the bright white of the metal outlining the crown. But then I can also see some porcelain, which is a little, you know, not quite quite as bright. It's a little gray, darker gray. So that's that porcelain gets veneered over top of the, the metal, the white gold usually. And he's got a little bit of bone loss, not horrible. And then on his second molar there, he's got a silver amalgam filling that you can see there. All right, up on top, this is where it starts getting a little interesting. So this tooth way in the back here i'm assuming that's his wisdom tooth and I, from what i can see he's got a bit of bone loss around it on the front side not much holding it in on the back side tooth's pretty much going to be a goner but it's interesting that this is part of a bridge it's a one two three four five tooth bridge so you got that one lone wisdom tooth weird choice to of a tooth to use as an anchor and then further forward he's got three implants holding the front half of the bridge three implants on the bottom i'm going to guess they were external hex implants an older type of implant these uh up here were a little bit different i can see this one where the first molar is is one type of brand which is it appears different compared to the other ones unless it's uh you know to the ones on the bottom bottom right hand side but then these next two are have a really kind of a funky almost like a wood screw pattern they might be from what i've heard over the years this might be a brand of implants that was one piece implant that was available in italy that you don't see much i don't think they were ever sold here in the united states but these are different compared to conventional implants which have a the implant and then a post that gets attached to him uh, and then the crown goes on top of the post these are usually just a one piece placed in there some of these i've heard are also bendable so once you place it uh, the metal is actually soft enough you can tweak it a little bit to one direction or the other to help it line up with the teeth and then the implant just goes over you know the crown the bridge to goes over it so for these i do see some bone loss strangely enough not as bad on those front two strange ones but this last implant here, he's missing probably about half the bone. So that implant's probably going to be a goner as well. So moving on over from the bridge, the next tooth that you can see is the canine right here. You can see a white filling. It's a composite resin filling because I could tell that because it's radio opaque. So it blocks the x-rays. So it shows as white, but it's not bright white like metal would be. So a silver amalgam, as you can see down in the lower second molar is much brighter white than this one is so there's that then moving from there we can see he's got his lateral incisor the two centrals the other lateral incisor and finally the canine and i've already mentioned that all these upper front teeth have a extreme amount of wear on them pretty much half the crown clinical crowns of the teeth were gone especially for the two central incisors but again, the patient's 83 years old. Looks were not that important, not high on his list. He just wants to be able to eat, uh, not have any pain. So he's not interested in restoring any of that. Teeth to look nice. He's basically look, looking for a full mouth reconstruction. And he's you know, losing some jawbone on those anterior teeth. You could, it's noticeable on the canine, especially on the distal side of the canine. It's pretty low compared to where it is on the mesial side of the canine. And then we come to the final bridge in the upper right hand quadrant again this is a, this is a four tooth bridge here and it's held up with a molar it's the second molar way in the back and i can tell that it has been root canal not very well i can faintly see the root canal filling material in a couple spots and i can also see what looks to be a uh, small post sticking into the tooth and then in front of that, there are three implants. The two center implants, these appear to be same style. Both are the same type of implant. These are internal hex implants. But strangely enough, the 
back one, the distal one of those two implants is not attached to the bridge. It's, it's there, but it's not doing anything. It's not holding the bridge up at all. This is different though than the, the implant on the bottom because there actually is a cover screw in this implant. It's, it's been uh, closed up, so food or anything can't get in there. And then this front implant uh, on the mesial side, that's, this one looks even more like a drywall screw compared to the ones on the other side. Again, this is a style of implant that I believe uh, was common or was available in Italy, not never here in the United States, but it's pretty long. And again, I believe these were bendable because if you look closely at it, it, I mean, to my eye, it looks like the part of it from the bone up it going up into the craw into the crown into the bridge there is bent a little bit versus it's not a straight line from the tip all the way up to the crown it's such a long implant too i wouldn't um hard to make out from this but i'm not sure if maybe even that tip of the the implant might be close to the sinus not quite it's a little blurry on this image though uh, but again patient wasn't having any complaints with it so just a very interesting look and so again on the back into the bridge on that final the part where it's attached to the tooth and again that's also a kind of a strange thing here in the u.s we usually attempt to not connect implant supported teeth to real teeth just because the mechanics of the two how they're held in to the jawbone are completely different can be done but it's not commonly done anyway that very last molar you can see kind of faintly see these white lines kind of throw crossing through them. That's nothing coming, that's not any weird type of spikes or nails or something coming off the crown. That's actually on, this was a pan, this was a piece of film uh, that the patient brought with him and somebody had actually scratched the emulsion off the film and that leaves that white light, the white lines on there basically to indicate that they put an X through that last crown and the reason they did that is because when i looked in the patient's mouth that crown that part of the bridge the part that sits over top of the roots had been cut off from the rest of the bridge and was not there anymore the roots of that tooth were still up in the gum but the crown over top of it was missing and so i think whoever did that for the patient crossed it off on the x-ray just to uh, indicate to the patient that that's not there so I hope you guys enjoyed this little walkthrough of these interesting case from Italy. Uh, looking forward to sharing some more cases with you. I'm also working on some, I'm also working on how to read a bite wing x-ray and how to read a periapical x-ray. And maybe at some point I'll even do a lateral ceph, although that's a little bit outside of my area of expertise. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.